The average Toronto home could cost $2 million by 2034, and that has been all the rage in the headlines these days. Let's break down where they're getting these numbers from and how that looks compared to where things are at today. I'm Michael Luzes. I'm a realtor here in Toronto on the ground level, and I've been working with buyers and sellers navigating the current market. If you're curious to know where things are trending for the property type and location that you're looking for, book a call with me anytime in the first link down below. There's no shortage of clickbait these days when it comes to housing, especially with all the new budget talks and all the different government parties discussing what housing looks like. Looking at the articles online, you'll find everything from how long it takes to save for the average Toronto home. And I recorded a video about that a couple weeks back. And this week, all I've been hearing about is the budget and how in 2034, it could cost $2 million on average to purchase a home. We won't spend any time going through the blog teal website. Instead, let's jump right into the Zucasa website, which breaks down what exactly they mean by 2034. And this says, start saving $2 million homes will soon be Toronto's new normal. We've also gone over the article that talks about where Toronto ranks on a North American stage. But taking a look at the average price Toronto detached homes, the year 2000, the average price is 243,255. In 2010, 431,262. And in 2020, 929,636. Now, one thing that's important to note is that in Toronto, on average, we've been in and around the 6.8% of an increase in the last 40 years. If you take that increase through all the peaks and valleys of where things have gone in the last 40 years, in general, we've been doubling around every 10 years in pricing. I'm not sure if that will continue into the next 10 years from where things are at today, but if we take a look at the average and what these numbers are looking like, we have seen a couple years with a negative return, but then they seem to be offset by a year with double returns. They grabbed some historical data from the Toronto Real Estate Board and it was created with Data Wrapper, I guess. And this shows where things have been and where they predict things are going. Now, this also keeps in mind a predicted price trending upwards relatively consistently from 2024 to 2034. It's really easy for the headline to be super clickbaity. And obviously, if it says $2 million for homes, it may feel like every single property in the city is $2 million or more. And that's simply not the case. Right now, the average price for the city of Toronto across the board, if you factor in condos to detach, is around $1.1 million. Now, in 10 years, that may be over $2 million if things to continue to trend at 6.8% per year. However, it doesn't mean that every property will be over the $2 million mark at that time. Just the average will be at that $2 million. You'll see condos less than that, and you'll see detached prices even higher than that. We also need to keep in mind the higher end homes and the lower price homes factor into when creating an average price. Here's a multi-million dollar picture on the site. It says, for those purchasing a single detached home in spring of 2024, it's becoming increasingly common to find that even the most affordable neighborhoods reach well past the average of $1.1 million. Rockcliffe, Smith, Keelsdale, and Eglinton West, the average single detached price reaches peak of $1.6 million by February 2023 still one of the most affordable neighborhoods to buy a single family detached house in the city. High Park Swansea, Ronsey, and Parkdale, which ranks as the most affordable neighborhood within the list of the city's most expensive areas to buy a home in Toronto. They had average home prices exceeding 2 million by February, 2022, which was the peak across the board and the occasional dips towards 1.8 million, 1.9 million. Prices have consistently remained above $2 million since June of 2023. We must keep in mind that those areas are super desirable when it it comes to buyers looking to purchase in the city of Toronto. High Park is easily accessible to the subway station, so you can get anywhere east and west of the city. Ronsi is a extremely trendy area, which has tons of cafes, restaurants, coffee shops, and you're also just on the outside of the downtown core. So really accessible to get in and out of the city for work and those commuting. So this is why these factors play into the price points of where things are at in the city of Toronto. It does go on to say that areas like Rosedale, Hogs Hollow, and the Bridal Path, are well beyond 3.6 million, even $4 million. And those are really, really big houses. So if you take a look online and look at maybe what Drake's house looks like, it is not your average single family home that you buy in the city of Toronto. It's much, much bigger than that. And the price tag is much higher than the typical Toronto house. Take a look at this chart. This really shows where pricing is at on the benchmark side across the board. On average, a single family detached in the city of Toronto is just over $1.7 million. If you take a look at a single family semi-detached house, you're looking around that one three range, townhouses in and around that $866,000 range, and condos in and around that 
$715,000 range. And when we get these new stats coming out here in the next week or so for April, I'll do another chart on where things are at in April relative to these numbers here. On the benchmark side of things, and this is a lot of lines and a lot of numbers, but this is showing the benchmark pricing for all the areas in Toronto going from Toronto CO1 all the way out to W10 ranking here at just over a million dollars for a single family detached home and CO9, which is that Rosedale area at the top of the list, just surpassing $4 million. And if we take a look at the middle here, this is C15, which we'll also take a look here on the map. So C15, we are looking right here in Bayview Village, Don Valley Village, in and around this area. CO9 at the top of the list, Rosedale, Moore Park. W1, here's that High Park, Swansea, and South Parkdale. So in here and around Bloor West Village. And W10 here in the West Humber, Clareville area. Most of the higher end on that list here in the central part of Toronto. Breaking down where pricing will be in 10 years from now, nobody has a crystal ball. And if we do see a modest price growth of even three to 5%, it will bring us closer to that $2 million range on average for the city of Toronto. Not sure if that will continue as we keep going forward and where interest rates will play a factor in that. We are noticing that the single family homes in and around the city are still in very high demand, especially when it comes to 70 detached. And if you've been watching any of the market stats updates, that is the hottest product in the city and remains to be even today, four months into the new year. The reason being is that it is step up from maybe a condo or townhouse into a single family home, still quite a good amount of space. Typically they're three bedroom, two bathroom houses and not quite as high of a price point as the detached market. It also serves as a really good step down for anyone who has maybe a bigger detached home looking to still stay in a house and downsize a little bit into the semi-detached properties. Let me know in the comments down below if that broke down a little more clarity on where pricing is at for the city of Toronto and where we could be in the future. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on where you think pricing will be in 10 years from now in 2034. I'm Michael Luzes. Thanks for watching.